In the interview with the Rock Bottom radio show and the Rock Bottom YouTube channel, Andy Tillerson, the mastermind of the tangent. Hi, Andy. Nice to see you and hear you. That's very kind of you. Nice, nice welcome, is that? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and uh, good to see you again. It's Jorg, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's Jorg. Really, Jorg. Jorg. Okay, that's how I say it. I just need to make sure I get it right. You, because you're calling me Andy, and that's right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And yes, you are the mastermind of the tangent, how I said, and you are normally responsible for the vocals and the keyboards. But in this specific case, yeah, um, you were um, responsible for all other instruments. So, what was the reason for this unusual approach? Um, this, there are lots of different reasons. Some of them are, are, are logistical reasons. Yeah, the rest of the band were really busy. Uh, quite a few people have noticed that our bass player Jonas has been playing with Steve Hackett for years uh, since 2017 now. So, uh, you know. Uh, and they do a lot of shows. Uh, we managed to fit in a show in 2023, but we haven't been together since then. Mm -hmm. And uh, Luke's been out doing a lot of stuff with Khan Attica, and he's been out doing stuff with Cyan. Theo's been doing the soft machine and things like that. And, you know, I I needed to make my money too. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, um, and I wanted to make a tangent record and... Um, Rather than find new people, I didn't want to do that because I really like the people I'm working with in the tangent. Uh, so I just thought, well, let's see if I can do it myself. Um, and, uh, you know, because we, I almost do make the records to start with for the tangent and then the rest of the band come in and do it properly. So uh -huh. this time it was my turn to come in and do it properly after, <laughs> after I raised that, which was quite a thing to try and do. Um, but you know, in the end, uh, uh, in the end, I think it's worked out okay, and it was a, quite an interesting experience. But I'm really looking forward to working with the band again. That's 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 all I can say. Really, it didn't hurt us to shake the tree to do something to see what happened if we just let me finish it off. That was an interesting idea, and um, I've learned from it. And um, It'll probably help me work with the guys in the future. So, so they will be part of the next album as well. They, they, um, this won't be a permanent. Um, oh no, no, no! It's not. Well, I mean, it's not in my mind to be that way. I mean, nobody knows which way the future is going to yeah, turn yeah. or anything like that. I mean, uh, you know. Uh, but um, no, my my intention is is to make. Uh, to make the next tangent album with a band, you know, like uh, like I always would. So mm -hmm. that's it. Yeah, it's not a okay. And how hard was it you to take over the position of the guitarist, bass player, drummer, and saxophonist? So were you proficient in playing all these instruments, or did you have to learn the instruments? Yeah, while recording. Well, it, it, I mean, I'm not. It wasn't easy um, uh, to to do. Um, you know, something like that never is. Um, you know, it took a lot of work, a lot of effort, and and it took two years really. You know, if you actually look back at when I first started saving the songs for this, it was a very long time ago. I would, you know, it, it was before we'd even released our last album. I'd started this one. Oh, and um, you know. Uh, there were a lot of difficulties in doing it. I, I wanted the bass to be a real bass guitar, but the, the problem was I couldn't play the bass. Um, so I got the bass, and uh, which uh, which my partner bought me for a Christmas present in 2022. And I just sat there and kind of thought, well, okay, how do I make this do what I want it to do? And, of course, I wanted it to do something, you know, like the kind of parts that Jonas might have done. But obviously, I just can't play anything like as well as him. He's one of the best in the world, and I'm a beginner. Mm -hmm. The thing is, is that what I, what I, what I kind of, the way I put it together is, I sort of started thinking, okay, I've been making records since you know 1982, and 
I know I know what it is I want the bass guitar to do. I know what I want it to do. Mm. I know how it'll work. All I've got to do is make it happen. And so the most important thing I could bring to the project was time. You know, if I had enough time, I could play the parts. Now, yeah. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't have to, you know, if I, if I had to play it live tomorrow, it would be a joke. <laughs> it would be terrible. But... You know, sitting here on this chair with the bass, just hour after hour after hour, I was able to sort of like get it to a point where I had something that sounded like a bass guitar playing in progressive rock music. It had counterpoint, mm -hmm. it had rhythm, it was it was everything. But, you know, not something I could repeat. It was, you know, it was, uh, it was me imitating and being inspired by the other bass players I've heard and thought, how do they do that? And just experimenting until I found out how they did it and then pressing record really quick. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's, that's how it happened and fell together. Mm. So did you engineer the album by yourself or did you have I, I did a... everything, everything, the whole thing was me from start to finish, even the artwork. So. <laughs> you, you, you didn't have a sound engineer who helped you to pick up the music or no no it was all oh. one man operation from start to finish right at the end because i'd been having a bit of a problem with my hearing i brought somebody in to listen to it with me um and make a few suggestions which i was then able to 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 put right um because you know I, i didn't want to make a mistake based on the fact i couldn't hear something that he could hear you know okay so you know that 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 was it really um once i once i'd got into the idea of it being just one person i thought no it, to, to do this the way i really would like to do it is to do everything from nothing happening right through to a full product with the artwork the packaging everything designed made in this room on that computer that i'm talking to you on now you know um the whole thing so uh, <laughs> that that was that was the aim and uh, the next time the aim will be to record it with five people like no you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. and my idea was you have played all instruments you have written the music you have produced the album by yourself so weren't you in danger to lose the overview of the whole project? Weren't you in danger to stew in your own grease? I, yeah, obviously that was that was something I, I, I had to do. But I, one of the things I've always been able to do is to, um, and, and some people can do this and some people can't do it. It's one thing I'm very good at is actually stopping being subjective and suddenly put sit myself down as a listener. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A lot of the time, I just listen to the music, and one of the reasons why it takes me so long to record things is if, is if I if I'm recording a 20 minute long piece and I change I change something in the middle of it that lasts say 30 seconds, I'm afraid I have to listen to the whole 20 minutes, yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> to see how the tiny little change I made in the middle makes me feel about the whole thing, and. So I really, I really do sort of disengage, forget I'm the musician, forget everything, and just listen to it and think, did I enjoy that this time? You know, and if if I didn't, I make notes about what I didn't enjoy, and then I go back and put them right as the musician and producer. So, you know, it's something that some people have, some people don't. You know, it's, some people are very, very, very so focused on the music that they can't hear it as yeah, other people I understand. Would, you know? yeah. and, Um And uh, in the end, that's that's something I just seem to have managed to get my way around. Maybe because I worked as a studio engineer with lots of other people before I started recording my own music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the you have added for one to the band name, so it's meant that you are one person. So yes, the tangent for one person. You know, yeah, for one, one person. person. Okay. Yeah. And um, yeah, could you describe the lyrical meaning of the new album? You are well known for yeah, social criticism and all these aspects. Mm -hmm. So what stands behind the album title to follow Polaris? Well, um, I think that when I first started this album, I, I was I asked myself, you know, 
as I often do, what am I looking for in this music? What there's always it's always a search for something is is music, and I, I guess I was this time I, I thought I'm searching for truth, you know, because um, you know in the years since 2016 it's become progressively harder and harder and harder to work out who's speaking the truth. Um, and, uh, and uh, you know, and what what can we actually say truth is? At first, when I first heard people calling it the post-truth era, um, I thought that was funny. How can you have post-truth? But the fact is I found out that you can, you know? Um, <laughs> And it's really, really upsetting, and uh, you know, uh, and and I, and I just wanted to find something that was still true, and I, and and as I thought about it, I thought, gosh, you can't say anything's true anymore. You can't, you can't say that, you know, uh, that, that that Donald Trump is a criminal without a lot of people saying that he isn't. You can't say that. Uh, Joe Biden is uh, is a criminal without a load of people saying that he isn't, and you can't no. say the earth is, <laughs> you can't say the earth is round without a load of people saying no, it's flat. You can't say that people went to the moon because people say no, they didn't. And, the, and there's arguments and arguments, and COVID was something to do with five G communications, and it was caused by the Chinese who deliver. You know, you know. The, what is there anything that's true? And uh, and then you know I, I finally decided yeah I saw it one evening whilst I was walking the dog and I thought that Tavares that it's there I can oh, see yeah. it it's in the North Star and all the stars spin around it and it appears to remain stationary above the North of uh, of our of our planet mm -hmm. and and I thought nobody can argue with that because it was there before Galileo started looking at this the, the heavens and it's it's going to be there after chat gpt's gone broke you know and it's it's just taken hmm. it's been there and we've navigated by it and it's a kind of gps and i've written songs about gps as yeah, before so it really fitted in nicely this sort of like natural gps unit that that even if you think the earth is flat it's still there <laughs> <Can't argue. laughs> and, and I just thought, wouldn't it be great, you know, to find this one thing that we could all believe in, that everybody, so yeah, we can all agree. Um, and then, you know, I, I guess that's my optimism, thinking that if we can find something we can all agree on, whether it's Polaris or not, maybe that's a start, you know, because mm. we really do need to make a, a, a fresh start at the moment because, you know, things are you know, as, as bad as they've ever been in my lifetime, probably in yours too. Um, you know, I'm, a, you know, I'm, a, I'm just, a, a, I'm not a particularly politically motivated person in terms of party politics. I'm just a human, mm -hmm. humanist, I suppose, mm -hmm. just wanting the best for everybody and for everybody to have a, a decent life on this amazing planet we live on without it being spoilt by complete idiots who want it all for themselves. So, you know, <laughs> that's that's is, that's not too much to ask, and I don't think it's too radical either. So um, I've not been ashamed of that, no. Okay. And the North Sky, the song, it's, it's the title track of the new album or some kind of title track. How would you see it? The, the song is the North the sky of the song is the yes. main song of the album the north sky is the is the is the is this is the setting of the scene it's sort of the title track yes yeah, the north was my idea the, some yeah. kind of title but, track yes of okay. course mm, yeah but it, it appears that that theme appears throughout the record yeah, i don't really. often make concept records but each one of the records most of them have got a theme that runs through them and uh, that's the theme really yeah mm -hmm. and alike in the darkness what's it about that's um that's about another pinpoint of light but once again on the same place i was once walking my dog again because you do every day and okay. it was a very, very dark night and it was very foggy and I was just coming home and I could hardly see a thing. And then suddenly I saw the light from this room, that light coming through the window, just briefly sort of like picking out a little shape on the lawn, this tiny little light. <laughs> and I kind of thought to myself, everything I do 
happens in that tiny little light there you know um and it and i started to you know write a song really about something that a lot of musicians a lot of artists writers you know poets have this experience of asking themselves whilst they're writing will anybody hear this will anybody understand what i'm saying will anybody like it and will it change anything you know mm. and of course you know there's there's no way i could say that you know i will change the world because i won't you know i mean i think you you, you need to be taylor swift status before you can start oh, changing okay, the world okay <laughs> you know and uh you know and and you know i'm i'm a very very long way from from the full stop at the end of taylor swift's name you know so the um the fact is is that i think that what you have to do is you have to think well if there's enough people if there's enough people if there's lots and lots of people saying things that that uh, that then then together we can change things i think that's that's okay. right yeah. and so yeah i mean i'm asking in that song i'm saying that there's there's people out there in the world who are being attacked by warlords there's people who are hungry there's people who are suffering from floods natural disasters diseases all these appalling things and i'm asking is there anything that my music will do to make their lives better because all i'm really offering is this little tune you know and, and i guess the answer is no it won't help them at all but if enough people make a noise things can things can happen and so i'm just making my little bit of the noise i think um, okay and uh that, that's that's all i can do mm -hmm. yeah. of course and there's one long track included the anachronism with vocals and one instrumental bonus track key at betty simulation these are two versatile and very moody tracks how hard is it to compose these long tracks compared to the more compact songs? And what do you like more? Well, I, I mean, I love uh, working in long song format. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, uh, a lot of people would frequently ask me, why do you write so many long songs? And and, and the, the answer is a lot more simple than people would actually believe. But the answer is, I spent my life when I was a kid listening to long pieces of music, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And first of all, I was listening to Beethoven, Mozart, and I was listening to, you know, uh, Rimsky-Korsakov, the Scheherazade, all these amazing musical stories, pictures in an exhibition. And then I discovered Yes and Close to the Edge when I was 12 years old and Van de Graaff Generator and Paul Hart's Plague of Lighthouse Keepers, Supper's Ready. To me, these are the songs, these are the songs that inspired me and they were long. <laughs> um, but I don't think of them as long. I never have thought of them as long. To me, I'm sorry, a 20 minute long song. I've said it so many times, sure. said, fast past 10 years. 20 minutes is the same length as an episode of The Simpsons, right? Okay. Or a Scooby-Doo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are not long television programs. <laughs> they are very short and, you know, close to the edge is the same length as Scooby-Doo. So, you know, it's not, it's not asking too much to ask people to listen to something like that. And, um, you know, I, uh, to me, that's it. I've, the, the, those are the pieces that influence me. And I've always thought that if you've got a lot to say in a song, you can't say what what's said in the anachronism in two minutes, you know, without grossly simplifying it. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. And, yeah, I've got the impression that the guitar is more in the background of the new album. How would you see it? Um, on former records, sometimes, yeah, the guitar was more in the foreground. I, I, I think write? that's, of course you're right. Yeah, I mean, like, the thing is, is that, you, you know, if you're, uh, if you, if you're wanting to, uh, to make a record on your own, well, you don't make the weakest instrument at the front, you know, <laughs> I, I mean, like, uh, I, I mean, I'm in a band with a, with a guitarist who, who is who is beyond good who is who is just such an amazing guitar player that i sometimes just think you know 
some of the stuff he does is impossible, but he somehow manages to do it. And for me to try to to take his role and and play and play that kind of role within the music would be stupid, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I wanted to make a record and I want the record to be good. So I had to put certain other instruments that I can play well more in the foreground. Um so yeah, there's plenty of rhythm guitar there. There are some guitar solos, usually played on a keyboard. Um and uh the uh but but on the whole, the guitar solos are shorter. They're they're a bit further back, and they're augmented mm. by other instruments playing around them. So yeah, that's 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 what you have to do. You know, if you it's okay, yeah. it's good. I don't miss the guitar in this case, mm. and you are creating you are creating a very warm, vivid, and versatile keyboard sound. So does it depend more on your playing, or is it more the equipment, or is it Different is it different at this time? How would you see it? I think that the the equipment you know that we use nowadays is is absolutely astonishing. Um, and of course, you know, if 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 Rick Wakeman or Keith Emerson had been able to see back in 1971 what I've got in this room now in <laughs> 20 in 2020 24, they'd just go. Wow. You know? <laughs> I mean, like, you know, uh, uh, every instrument they ever had, you know, I've got in a little box the, 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 this big. <laughs> uh, Mellotrons, grand pianos, harpsichords, synthesizers, every every synthesizer you can think of, I've got one uh, on the box, you know. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I've got I've got five different Hammond organs and I've got a real one downstairs. Um drum kits, so many of different types, drum machines, the the whole it, it's just amazing what 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 we can do. <laughs> and you know, it's obvious some people don't like that, of course, you know, because there's always resistance to change and people sort of like look back and see bands in a recording studio. With all the microphones and the big yeah, mix yeah. and the speakers and the whole the whole recording studio thing, and that's how they think proper recording is. Well, I I I've, when I look at pictures of bands in recording studios, I kind of get the same feeling as I do when I look at a nineteen fifties computer, which is full of yeah. valves and five rooms big and tapes yeah, 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 spinning yeah. round yeah. and and you know to me that's so old you know I don't I kind of think how did people ever make records in those places you know uh, yeah. it's it's a different world to me and uh, you know I happen to quite like this world and the technology that 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 it's that it's given me and nearly all the people involved in the in those days have are still are now working with systems similar to mine you know it this is you know this is how music is made today it's not how it was made yesterday and in in 1971 that was all new you know and my mum used to say oh that that doesn't sound like violins it sounds electric and she was talking about a mellotron you know she said oh it sounds it sounds tinny, she used to say. And I used to say, it sounds beautiful, Mum. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and she said, but it's not real. <laughs> and, and, you know, the argument will continue. I've had people tell me, oh, that's not a real Mellotron. I said, well, tell me what a real Mellotron is. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> just uh, we're, we're hopeless, really. We can, never, we can never decide. We all get into something when we're about 20 and think we're the bee's knees. And then, and then sort of by the time we're 60, we think that nothing 20-year-olds do is anywhere near as good as what we did when we were 20. Yeah. So <laughs> it just, it's gone on forever and ever. And, uh, and, I, and, I, and I'm sure it will. There'll be people, you know, in, in 60 years' time, they'll be saying, oh, they don't make people like Taylor Swift anymore. You know, she was she had talent now. And, <laughs> you know, and I can just hear them saying that, and it, it, it'll be the same forevermore, won't it? <laughs> Good. And um, the new album has got a very jazzy and swinging groove, and it re reminds me a little bit of the Canterbury sound of your first album, so am I right? 
Um, it's a little bit a step, not a step back, but it goes a little bit to your beginnings, sound-wise. I think that we've never moved. We, we always... If if there's a reason why the tangents managed to keep going for so long, and and you know because you know this is the thirteenth album we've made, I've been in this band for a third of my life, and I've been signed to Inside Out for a third of my life, and I try to work out how we're still here, and I think the answer to that question is is that we do move forward, we do try lots and lots of new things, but we never abandon the people yeah, yeah. We originally came here for we never we never became one of those bands who said oh we need to throw prog out oh no we're not prog you know we keep that it's there it's the core of what we do um so right there in the heart there's that prog that canterbury and it's been there with us on every album we've ever done but sometimes we move away we'll start messing about with dance music we'll start messing about with disco funk metal um, all uh, orchestral music that we bring all this in, but there's always that central core of of, of being a progressive rock band that we've never abandoned, and uh, mm. I think that's why you know people are still listening to the band after such a long period of time, you know, because we we give people what they want and we give them something else. I think that's that's been the idea all the way through, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, because the tangent was never supposed. You, you know, the tangent was never supposed to be my band, and my band was supposed I to know. be all oh, ninety degrees, <laughs> and uh, and like uh, PO ninety was, you know, much more about being a modern modern rock band, which had a few progressive influences. Then suddenly, I found myself in charge with this much bigger selling rec band, the Tangent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we'd done the we'd done the retro bat retro prog thing. So after the third album, I, I started to move and start thinking, right, okay, we'll incorporate different different mm. kinds of music into this and start building something up, our own sound that sounds like us and nobody else. And, you know, I, I think we've done that. Um, we, you can hear our influences, but our influences range from early yes early van der graaf generator uh, caravan hatfield in the north as far as things like nine inch nails uh groove armada and uh, uh you know so many mm. other different artists See, up, up as far as dirty loops who i absolutely adore so you know it's um you know mm -hmm. just the way we had to do it mm -hmm. And yeah, you have had many musicians in your band. How deep was the influence on the musical style of your albums? Did it influence the style or well, Yes, it does. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm 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 sort of like uh, the you know main writer of the band and I kind of determine what we're going to do, uh, what 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 music we're going to play and everything. And I put that out to the rest of the group. And they always have carte blanche to to do what they want to do on the record. Mm -hmm. uh, all I ask them to do is uh, keep the flavor of what we're doing, yeah. So that you know, keep it funky if it's funky, if it's rocking, keep it rocking, and everything. And and you know, as a result of which, I actually get when you normally hear a, one of the normal regular tangent albums, it is the product of five minds mm. working together it's not me saying play this okay, to anybody man. yeah you know luke takes all the guitar parts i've done and throws them out the window Psst, gone yeah then he puts his bits on i, I understand and, yeah, yeah. and that's and that's what happened and jonas does the same and you know and sometimes i'll hear things that they think yeah we'll keep that that andy did there and they'll play that and i hear that and that's great you know uh it, you know, they kind of respect me and I respect them. So mm -hmm. I, I can't see the point of hiring great musicians and then telling them what to play. What's the point in that, you know? And, and there's lots of people do that. I, I've i been hired by people, uh, you know, they say, oh, it's going to be great to work with you, Andy, and everything. And then and then, and then they were saying, no, you, you, it's <laughs> this, you've got to play this. And I thought, well, well, that's not me, is it? No, you no, know, no. I, I understand. <laughs> so, yeah. wh wh why do this? But, of course, I, I just quietly get on with it and do what they want. But, you know, I have to, I have to wonder, why did you 
want to bring somebody in if you just wanted to tell them what to play. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Okay. This was my idea. It's good. And um, yeah, will there be a tour or at least some live shows as a band after the release of the new Not album? this one, I don't think, because of course the, the Steve Hackett shows are still going on. After I think that we'll probably wait till after we've recorded our 14th record and then we'll maybe go out and tour uh, together. Mm. As for whether anything from this album ever gets played live, it's part of the it's part of what we have available to play. Um, there's there's of course songs that we play that only I ever played on the original in the first place. Um, you know there are some like that because there was nobody in the band at the time who was in mm. now who was in when. It, so it doesn't matter. Um, the the only problem we have is that usually when we have a show, it's going to be about two hours long, which means that we have to usually miss out round about eight whole albums. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> we only yeah. play tracks off four of them, and uh, yeah. you know, uh, so we never know which ones to play. Now, uh, mm. our first tour, we only had two albums to choose from, so it was you know we when we first played at a Schaffenburg. Uh, in 2004 it was sort of like this is from our new album mm. and this is from our second album and this is from our first album <laughs> you know, now we've got 13 too so, many albums yeah. okay yeah. <laughs> it can't do that anymore so a few years ago the fans were shocked because i guess nine years ago you had a heart attack or some kind like that so how is it i today? did yes are you yeah. feeling fine today or how would you yeah, i feel, feel pretty good actually um yes uh, i had the heart attack when i was 55 years old and i'm 64 now so uh you know uh and i haven't had any further problems with that um cross fingers uh and um obviously uh you know uh as you get older things stop working as well as they used to uh, <laughs> but like uh you know um i've I, i've got uh, i've got quite a lot of false teeth i've got um i've got hearing aids in both ears i wear glasses but i've still got my own hair you know yeah. so oh, you oh, know oh. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah but you probably did better with better for teeth than me you see we all we all have well our strong points and everything but like you know it, it's really weird at night you know i kind of have to take my whole head off you know so often the glasses hearing aids out teeth or the whole <laughs> <laughs> it's just uh it's just amazing isn't it you know feel like the bionic man sometimes but uh yeah except not as fit <laughs> yeah that's what is it it is and you have mentioned it before parallel or 90 degrees um mm -hmm. will there be a reunion or will you pick up the band as a side project or what um i have got some ideas for po90 at the moment actually um but uh I, th those are uh, some it's something i can't really actually talk okay. about yet, but there is something there is something bubbling there okay uh, that sounds and I'll good i'll be sure to tell you about it when I, when I, when it's happening yeah so yeah uh, um you know cuz uh I think that gradually slowly but surely the tangent has become po90 you know it's 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 similar to when uh, XTC had a had a, a spin-off band called the Dukes of Stratosphere. And the Dukes of Stratosphere sounded a bit different to XTC. They were more kind of 60s psychedelic. But the more the two bands existed together, the more the more XTC started to sound like the Dukes of Stratosphere. And in the mm -hmm. end, they just thought well, there's no point in carrying on with this other one <laughs> because we we've actually become that band. I think that you know there's there's parts of the the tangent now that are as po90 as po90 ever was itself so you know we mm -hmm. just have to yeah it came from the same head really and um so yeah, yeah. okay these were my questions do you have further information for your fans uh, concerning the new album or some other projects well um uh, like uh, well it's we we uh i have got lots of projects in front of me um uh, uh the the next tangent record will be a much bigger kind of concept thing than we've been doing for a while it's going to be more like our album le sac de travail with an orchestral sections and mm -hmm. everything and it's going to be a piece which is about my generation and therefore your generation and the amazing time that we've had coming from 
a time before, well, <laughs> if, um, I actually remember traveling on steam engines when I was a kid, when they were actually yeah, running yeah, yeah. railways. And uh, and we've come from there through the invention of uh, the, the video recorder, through the invention of computer games and games consoles, computers, uh, Sinclair Spectrums. We've seen the Vietnam War. We've landed on the moon. We've done all these things have happened during our lifetimes. And, uh, you know, we, 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 and into the bargain, we were the first people on the Internet. So, you know, it's uh, and we lived half our life before anybody even mentioned the Internet. So, and it was quite fun as well. So, you know, <laughs> um, there's never going to be another generation quite like us, really. So uh, okay. and I want to make this album about us and the things we've seen since the end of the 1950s. The whole, yeah, it sounds mm. very interesting. So I'm excited about it so have yeah. much success with the forthcoming album yeah with yeah to the yeah well, I, hope it, I hope it goes well <laughs> yeah okay it's a great album i'm really amazed and great sounding record so andy thank you very much for this nice interview yeah okay. k o r this is a typical german phrase Keep on rocking. Keep on rocking. Okay, well, that's <laughs> <laughs> I always will. I'm, I'm afraid that, you know, uh, I've been a rock and roller since I was a kid, and uh, I don't think I see any signs of changing. Um, okay. and, uh, you know, it's, it's all, I ever, all I've ever wanted to do. So there you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you very much. Until and thank then, you. Until next time. Bye-bye. And thank Bye. you very much for spending the time with us. Very uh, my, good. My nice to be. pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. See you later.